Hello and welcome to Ultra Q episode 16. Uh, my name is Red. Uh, I am joined by Mal. Fuji was robbed. Fuji was robbed. Uh, this would have made more sense if I had redone uh, my Finland joke, but uh, unfortunately someone's hard drive briefly failed. Uh, speaking of, I'm also joined by Razen. Hi. Uh, I had an E-Day moment that happened three minutes into our attempt at recording this. All is well. All is good. Uh, coming up, Season 19 of the popular web series Red vs. Blue, uh, Ultraman's second ever act of mercy, and Fuji's biggest L yet. Uh, not a great week for Fuji. She, it's, it's, yeah, rip. So, um, sometimes all the homies walk out of the room leaving you alone. They do. <laughs> With someone who's not a homie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, before we get into Ultraman, uh, Eurovision happened last night. Uh, Britain are back where we belong, at the bottom of the table. It's where we deserve to be. Uh, and Sweden should not have won because their song was boring. Uh, Finland should have won because uh, their song was fun and funny. And I love that guy's little dance that he does. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, he's dressed like a fucking JoJo character. It's great. Um, I am gonna. I am just gonna send you to what what <laughs> Eurovision uh, Finland guy looks like. I think I saw it. I did not the, see it. The neon green jacket, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Let me show you this guy. Uh, look at him. Oh, damn. Yeah, that is a JoJo character. King. Yeah, I, was, I was about to say, this is like the third guy from Vento Oreo, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that, uh, that was Eurovision. Um, but, uh, I've got, I've got another thing I finished, but I'll save it until, uh, until both of you are wrapped. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to get into it really, but I want to announce it. <laughs> I want to like yell it to the world. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I normally, I, I like my Twitter feed is half people talking about Eurovision, but I I did not see it this time around uh, and didn't know that it even was Eurovision until this very call this morning um, because uh, the new Zelda came out and that's all I've been seeing. Um, How is the new Zelda? I am liking it quite a bit. Uh, I'm five hours in. I, I streamed three hours the day it came out and then two hours yesterday. And overall, I'm having a pretty good time with it. Uh... Prior to release, Nintendo didn't say a lot about what this game really was, um, to the point that all we really had was, oh, there's a bunch of islands in the sky for the longest time, and then they did like one of their little direct showcases a few months back that basically revealed one of the core mechanics, which is, hey, you can craft a bunch of shit using this funky little, like, goop hand. Uh, to attach random devices I, and fans isn't it, and engines. Isn't it called the Ultra Hand? It is called the Ultra Hand. Oh, which yo. Is, <laughs> which is, I think, named after a toy that Nintendo made back before they made video games, because they were a company of playing cards and toys and other random stuff like that for many years before uh, they made the Famicom. So, question, and I think I know the answer to this question, but uh, crafting mechanics cringe or crafting, crafting mechanics good? Good. Um, yeah. it is, it is Banjo, I, I can't believe they made Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts, but they kind of did. <laughs> um, I, being like, oh, it's bad when we do it, but when Nintendo does it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I had a ton of fun. The moment it really clicked for me, and I, I need to make a, I need to make a hashtag YouTube short out of this one. <laughs> Think, uh, because this is what uh, the algorithm demands of people now is we all need to make little TikTok fucking videos to get any uh, reach or for them to push our shit. Um, there's this point in the starting island where uh, the guy goes, hey, you're going to go around to three of these shrines located on the Sky Island. And once you do that, we're going to get you off the Sky Island and playing the actual video game. Um, so you have this miniature sandbox area to learn the core mechanics and, like, kind of internalize the differences between this and Breath of the Wild. And I did it in what I assume is the reverse order. Like, I can't remember which direction I went, but 
if the game wants you to go clockwise, I went counterclockwise, uh, which is honestly something I've really enjoyed about Breath of the Wild and this, is that they they will absolutely tell you a vague direction for you to go. You do not have to do that, and honestly, sometimes it's more fun coming at things backwards. Um, case in point, I needed to get one last shrine. Now, I could have walked all the way back the way I had came, and then got it in, you know, the, the quote-unquote normal direction to approach the shrine from. Uh, I did not want to do this. Uh, the one thing stopping me from getting from where I needed to go was that there is this massive lake uh, that stretched basically from one... So, like, the, the starting island's kind of a donut. And from mm -hmm. one part of the ring to the other is just this massive lake, and the wind was pushing one direction. Uh, and it was the the opposite way from which I was approaching it, uh, with the intention being like, hey, you make a raft on the one side, and then, you know, you can kind of float on over to the other side, I'm assuming. Um, but I was like, well, fuck, there's nothing over on my side of the lake to make a raft or anything like that. But I remembered that there was these... So, sometimes there are just these floating blocks that are around that you can just move with the Ultra Hand. Um, now, you can't move them while you're on them. However, there's nothing stopping you from grabbing one that you're not on, and then moving it somewhere, hopping onto it, because you move it close enough, and then you just, like, make an infinite staircase using two floating blocks, basically. Okay. Uh, this takes a lot of time, and I got about halfway through this process before, before someone's like, hey, you have those fans from, like, your inventory or whatever. Can you, like, stick a fan onto here and, like, make an airship? And I was like, huh. So I stuck a fan on, well, I attached the two blocks together, because um, you can also do that, to, to give it, like, a longer body, and then I stuck some fans on the back, and I just made an airship and flew across. It felt great. <laughs> yeah, I've been what I've been seeing people's contraptions uh, on Twitter. Uh, it's a, you know, everyone becoming, like, uh, their own personal Lord Shot weapon. It's, it's fantastic. Um... It's uh, really cool looking. Um, I have heard there is a weird horse gacha system, though. It's like something to do with weird <laughs> currencies. And I'm like, this is the, the no, this is the death of video games. This is what we were talking about. <laughs> there is a, there is a, I don't know if it, it okay, it, it's definitely styled after real life gacha machines, but there is the, so the way you get a bunch of the like fans and engines and, random contraptions that you can stick on to like the blocks and stuff in the world mm -hmm. is you you collect these various crystals that are you know classic fantasy trope like there's this advanced ancient civilization that built all this robotic shit around or whatever right well, that's new yep <laughs> <laughs> yep uh so you you get all these little crystal cores from i can't even remember how exactly you get them but uh, i think it's from like defeating the enemy like certain enemy types and stuff like that you put it in this vending machine, and then it gotches out, like, a bunch of, like, randomized, like, crafting material stuff that you can stick onto shit that you make, um, which was very funny. I, I don't know what the deal is with the horse stuff yet, uh, though I did notice, because in Breath of the Wild, I'm pretty sure when you captured a horse, you had to, like, wrestle it for a little bit, and it was kind of like a stamina mm -hmm. gate. Uh, that doesn't seem to be a thing anymore. Um, oh, that seemed cool in Breath of the Wild. I still haven't played Breath of the Wild, but um, so I I had to give back the Switch that I was borrowing. So I guess I'm never going to play it. Rip. The, mo Rip. the most the most I've played of Zelda is like a few hours of Oracle of Ages when I was like nine. That's a, that's a good. One. I'm more of a seasons person, but I like the Oracle games a lot. Shout outs to Capcom who made that actually. <laughs> um, Shout out to uh, Capcom just generally right now. They seem to be doing all right. Yeah, honestly. They should uh, They should uh, make a new Mega Man game. True. They fucking should. They did. It's called the Battle Network Collection. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, no. So the thing with the horses is that in Breath of the Wild, because you had so many teleportation and like flying, or like, I guess, gliding options... The horses often felt a little underwhelming, where it's like, this is cool for a little bit, but you're only going to be on the horse for so long before you're climbing somewhere or, like, flying somewhere or you just teleport to a waypoint or something. So my suspicion is that they got rid of the horse wrestling thing 
because they're like, oh, we need people. We need to give people more reason to actually use the horses that are around. <laughs> um, we'll we'll see because uh, I've seen people creating basically uh, like eight like ATSTs from Star Wars to walk around in. <laughs> I I have seen I've seen someone make a mech just on yeah. like two wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, uh, I, I don't know if the horses are gonna be uh, gonna be worth it. Uh, I guess the last thing to say is that um, you can watch my second stream of this if you want uh, to see me realize I've been CO for Rivered again because this game, they did not advertise, also has a massive underworld as well as the overworld. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice. And there, there's like... So, the majority of times when games are like, oh, we're going to play around with the darkness and, and limited light sources, I go, oh, gee, fuck, no. Because most times... Games don't do it well. Um, they made an area that is entirely dark and and made it about traver like how traversing the landscape is different because of the lack of light and the fact that there's only so much visibility uh, given to you by these random glowing things. Um, th they they designed it very well. Uh, you have this resource that you can attach to your arrows to basically make these little um, light bubbles. Uh, to guide your way, um, and they give you just enough that I felt very comfortable exploring large swaths of the underground from from where I at for where I am at at this point in the game, which is very early on. Um, but at the same time, it's limited enough that I'm like, I need to call my shots with lighting my way here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to uh, dig deeper into this one. Uh, I have seen a lot of things saying like, oh, it's even longer than Breath of the Wild, and uh, that kind of concerns me because my my one gripe with the Breath of the Wild is that I think it's a, um, I think Breath of the Wild is an amazing game for 50 of its like 70-ish hours, depending on how much you want to do, but there is a point in that game where the magic kind of goes away and it becomes a little more, it becomes a little bit more of like a, a, a to-do list as you have seen everything that the game has to offer in terms of what's behind this corner, what's underneath this rock, what's within this shrine. Um, you, you just run out of things to see, and the, the actual structure of the game uh, doesn't give you enough to really go off of, and it, it kind of just feels like you're going through the motions towards the end, which was actually something that I think Elden Ring addressed in its open world design that I liked a lot, because, I mean, I still haven't finished that game, but it never stopped surprising me. Um, even when they start to repeat enemies and stuff. And uh, I'm curious if they try to vary it up more in this one, too. Because um, there's there's just a lot more meat on these bones, it feels like, compared to Breath of the Wild, to the point that I feel like it might be hard for me to go back to Breath of the Wild a little bit, just knowing, like, oh, there's a version of this that has a lot more stuff going on uh, in the game that came after. So, yeah. Nice. They made a good, have, thing, good video game. Yeah, I have one more thing that I can talk about a lot less longer, which is sad considering this is a Tokusatsu podcast. I watched the sequel to Godzilla, Godzilla Raids Again. Oh, how oh, was I've it? I've seen this one. Um, so I always wondered, how come nobody talks about the second Godzilla movie? Uh-oh. Ma made by the same people. Uh, I discovered why <laughs> nobody talks about the second Godzilla movie. It's because um, bad. It's because it's bad. It's pretty bad. Uh, they try to simultaneously do Godzilla again while also introducing the idea of big other enemy monster. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels like two movies slapped together. They, they try to do the same like love triangle human drama stuff again. Um, and some of it works, most of it doesn't. The problem I have with this movie is that every element of the original Godzilla movie I feel like complements one another, complements each other well, and it feels like a real tight narrative where the the tension brought about the disaster that Godzilla wreaks, uh, you know, wreaks upon the people of uh, Tokyo, is is like a fuel for the human drama and Doctor Serizawa's uh, moral conundrum that he came up with. Mm -hmm. uh, in this, it's just there's a cool pilot guy. Uh, there's oh Jun, sorry, 
I I kind of was like, oh damn, huh? They're, I'm noticing a recurring theme of pilot men in the in the, the Toku stuff I've seen uh, this early on. Um, but then, so there's cool pilot guy. There's his girlfriend who is some rich guy's daughter who like owns like a like a cannery. Um. In, I believe it's Osaka. It's It's been a little bit since I, I watched it, but I'm pretty sure the city of this one is Osaka. And then there's another guy who's a, a, a funny pilot guy who has a crush on that girl. And she keeps teasing him throughout the movie. It's like, oh, is there a girl you like? And he's like, oh, yeah, I just haven't gotten around to telling her yet. Haha. <laughs> um, the scene where she finds out, I actually think is really good and well directed. And you can kind of see her like she's not really conflicted about it like she's very flattered that this guy likes her um but there's obviously this tension here of like oh you are you are certainly not available right now um but he's but he very much heavily implies uh in the greatest death flag i've ever not greatest but in the most obvious death flag i've ever seen he's like oh uh i gotta ask you or, or talk to you about what women like when I get back from flying on my Godzilla mission. No! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and there's this little scene where he, op- like, he leaves behind his, like, wallet or something. or It's like a little notebook. And she opens it up and sees, like, a photo of, like, herself in there. And she kind of smiles or whatever. And I was like, okay, that's, like, that's like a, a very, like, human scene that I, I kind of appreciated. Um, other than that... Uh, so there's the one movie here about the pilots uh, trying to deal with Godzilla. There is a movie that kind of happens before that where a giant fucking dinosaur shows up and Godzilla and it beat the shit out of each other in Osaka. Uh, my eyes were glazing over. I did not care. The booking is not there. It, it just doesn't... It's not doing much for me. Um, rather famously, there is a bit of special effects uh, stuff going on here that uh, just kind of fell flat, uh, and the director was pissed about. So when you're watching a lot of this old kaiju stuff, like you can see that the footage is a little bit slowed down, um, and I can't remember if the the technical camera term for like how you achieve this is called overcranking, overcranking or undercranking, but it's a it's, it's a thing you do with the camera to add weight and momentum and this like big hulking like sense of movement to something. You you slow the footage down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, there was miscommunication happening, and they were filming this on a very tight timeline, so the footage actually got sped up instead of slowed down. No. And uh, Honda was pissed. <laughs> um. But uh, I actually liked it because what happens is that Godzilla and this dinosaur start to wrestle in the middle of Osaka. And it I don't know if either of you have ever seen like Grizzly Man or just footage of like two bears in the woods wrestling. Mm-hmm. It ends up looking like that and it's animalistic and like ter- like these things are moving terrifyingly fast and wildly and just breaking shit. In a way that that just reminded me of two bears going at it, and I actually think that uh, it looked pretty cool. And I was surprised when I was reading up on the movie later, like, oh, people hated this. Um, Damn. But uh, I was like, oh, huh, that actually seemed really interesting. It just makes them, it makes Godzilla feel more like an animal in a way that he kind of feels like a giant, terrifying force of nature in the first one. Um, but aside from that, the. There's just not a lot going on. The movie is too long. They beat Godzilla in the end by basically getting him in this canyon in his, like, island home that he has taken residence in. And mm-hmm. they they shoot missiles at the nearby mountains and cause an avalanche and bury Godzilla. Uh, That's it? Yeah. And this scene goes on for fucking ever. It is no oxygen destroyer, like... Suicide. <laughs> yeah, it really took a while. Isn't this also like technically a second Godzilla or something? <laughs> yes. That, okay, so that's the other thing. It it's just a second Godzilla, and they're like, oh, uh, there was there was another one. Um, and I've seen people point out like, hey, this is probably like talking about like the second, the, like the second atomic bombing, and and the the realization of oh god, there's another. There's that means there's more. Like this is the new future that we live in. Um. They don't, 
I don't feel like they lean into that as hard as maybe some online criticism or commentary about this movie seems to suggest. Uh, it feels a lot like, oh, fuck, that Godzilla movie we made was really successful. Uh, let's put this one in Osaka next. Right. Um, it just feels like they were scrambling to capitalize off the success of the first one, and uh, it just doesn't it, it doesn't hit the same highs ever. I don't think I'll ever watch this again. Oh, damn. Um, next up is Godzilla vs. King Kong, which I've heard is much better, and uh, where things start to get a little goofy, but it's been a while since I've seen the original King Kong, so I'll probably watch that first. You know, if you're first. just gonna go in order for the Toho Kaiju movies, I might restart my thing when you get catch up to war i was <laughs> oh hell yeah uh, uh i think i'm already skipping a step because i don't think i've i i think i skipped mysterians which i no i think like mysterians that. is after but, oh is it okay uh, i can double check i pretty yeah. sure i had a list somewhere and i lost it i was just happening to go in godzilla order but i should probably actually be going in toho order if only because i feel like if i just go godzilla i'm gonna get a little sick of our lizard friend yeah, uh, i mean to be sp- fair i think the first three are still like you know godzilla godzilla uh, yeah. actually no i think there's some i think there's a lot there's in between well, I'll, I'll check i'll get back to you yeah i i, I think we might have been looking at the same list because i know that there is a big list of like oh hey here's the big toho kaiju stuff um so i'll i'll uh, get back on that but yeah uh i'm still having fun on my kaiju uh, watch along but uh not all of them are hits <laughs> that's for sure yeah they can't can't all be wins um mel have you been up to anything uh i've been up to some stuff but also i haven't really got far enough that i was gonna i feel like i can talk about it uh okay there was like a three episode OVA I started and I, I could have theoretically finished it for today, but also I wasn't sure how the scheduling would be today. So I was like, I'm going to hold yes. off and finish on it. Uh, it turns yeah, out it would have been fine, uh, but you know. Uh, our schedule is a little, a little funny today. There was, there was a minute where I thought we were just going to skip straight to Ultraman, <laughs> uh, but uh, we're doing okay. So if you don't have anything, I can go straight into my last thing. Um, okay. uh, I finished the romance of the fucking three kingdoms. Woo! I'm not going to talk about it loads because obviously, uh, you know, Mel's no. reading it. Um, so, so <laughs> Red, the internet needs your hot take on this extremely so, unknown. And <laughs> so, tell, so first, first, tell me, Red, did you did you expect who would win? Uh, so I had kind of called that um, uh, who was going to lose. Um. I was, uh, I began to see where things were going, um, towards the end. I was like, I was like, okay, I can see what's happening here. And there was some cool stuff in terms of like the repetition of like, like fate kind of taking revenge on one of the factions was really interesting. <laughs> uh, really fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I liked the, I liked, I liked how it, how it panned out i thought it was cool um it was uh they managed to uh the author managed to work uh history into a pretty decent narrative um obviously uh doesn't line up with history one-to-one all the time uh (laughs) but uh yeah i was uh i was a big fan i think that book's really sick (laughs) um it has just some of the coolest shit in the world in it uh i think uh the ranking of the heroes of the age is uh, just the coolest thing that has ever happened. Um, and uh, yeah, that was a good book. Um, I don't know what to do with myself now. I have to read something else, but like, you know, what do I fucking read next? I just read uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Wait, wait for me to finish Romance and then we can read Water Margin. Fuck. <laughs> oh man, I have been looking at like, what would it? How how long is water margin? Oh, about yeah, about also interminably long. Yeah, okay. Apparently, there's also like <laughs> three different versions of different chapter lengths. Damn, damn. Yeah. So the the actual the actual thing on my plate now is uh, I watched like four episodes of your boy Kong Ming. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> I gotta get more of your boy. Um. It was really good. I was just watching episode one, and it was just like always, just constantly. I was just like, "Holy shit! This is the this is the great the greatest thing ever." <laughs> <laughs> He's like the the man the man at the club owner turns out to be a huge 
uh, Three Kingdoms uh, stan, and I'm just imagining <laughs> imagining normal people watching the show. Ah, that's funny. He's he hired someone just to talk about Three Kingdoms, and I'm watching this like I'm the same, bro. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> he is me. Um, it's fantastic stuff, and you know, there's like a there's an ongoing translation of the ninety the nineties uh, Chinese uh, adaptation. Um, yeah, that's the that's the good one apparently. Yeah, that's that's apparently the good one. Um, I've got my two thousand and ten one is apparently goofier. <laughs> the two thousand and ten one does look goofier. I've seen how Cao Cao acts in that, <laughs> and that's very funny. Um, but also like um, <laughs> I also saw a video called like you know, uh, 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 I also saw a video about like about the the guy who wins. Uh, the Three Kingdoms uh, about him, his final coup at the end, uh, set to X Gun Give a Tear. I was fair. like, yes, fantastic for the 2010 version. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I have I have to watch that 90s version at some point because uh, the Twitter. How many episodes is it? It's like it's, 90, 80 something. Yeah, it's like roughly one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watched the first episode and it was pretty good, but then I was like, I'm gonna read the rest of the book first yes, and wait for I, the subs to finish. I I have to watch it because uh, the Twitter account for the translation group uh, keeps retweeting my Three Kingdoms shit posts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I respect uh, that. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out. There's a good. Uh, didn't some guy from shit? Didn't some guy from Shin Ultraman start retweeting our shit? What was up with that? I didn't look too closely at it, but that guy was also retweeting. I think, retweeting I think me. he's. I think he was like an extra. I don't want to insult him and get it wrong, but I think <laughs> okay. he, I, he, he didn't have like a. He wasn't like a named character in Shin Ultraman or something. But I saw the like and I saw that he was an actor and had like a link to like his agency and I was like, oh, okay, hang on, what's happened here? <laughs> yeah, because I saw that guy too in my mentions, or I mean, just like like it or whatever, and I was like. Wait, who are you? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, there's a good video essay about Poston Select where he uses the Kong Ming show existing as a, like a jumping off point to just talk about why why Kong Ming. <laughs> and it's good. Why Kong Ming? Like, yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> just, just link him in the chat. Uh, it's a good video. Uh, fantastic. Oh, damn. Cool. Kong Ming in Japan. Excellent. Um, yeah, the... Kong Ming is kind of he's kind of the main character of the book. Uh it's it's a whole thing. Um but it's really uh, histor- good. historical epics notorious for introducing the main character a third of the way through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's um, you know. Uh he he had shit to do. He was chilling. Um anyway, yeah, that's Romans of the Three Kingdoms. It's good. Good book. Uh you, right, here's the thing. It's un right. I looked up because i when i was a teenager i read all of the uh, game of thrones books um uh there are so many war- more words in that than in the romance of the three kingdoms it's like du- like a song of ice and fire is like double the length by word count um and it's not finished and it does so much <laughs> less and it's like this is not fair bro <laughs> this is like mean <laughs> you you get to i mean you get to book four of that series and you're like Bro, you have to do something. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> I, think, I think me just like passing on Game of Thrones was a, a double. I I do not think people keep being like, "Where's that book?" And I'm like, "If you read the last two, I think you very much know that he just keeps adding loose threads that he he has no intention of like." easily tied back up it's kind of a and, mess and like, like you can see right it's like it's it's, it's, it's also it's also like you know how it's gonna fucking end like you can see the ending like you can see yes. the ending you can see the ending so much that everyone knew how the show was gonna end even though they were gonna fuck it up you you like everyone everyone knows how those, how those books are gonna end no one cares <laughs> there the only thing i am mildly interested about with the rest of those books is that uh the books have a uh, what I can only describe as a zombie Karen running around. <laughs> um, oh my that, god! <laughs> that I I really want to know what the fuck's going on there. But aside from that, I've kind of checked out of uh, a song and ice and fire. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, if you were disappointed 
uh, by a song of ice and fire. <laughs> Please read the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It, it has everything. It has everything you want, and is also just better. It has Lubu. It ha- for, oh, for like, it has Lubu. For, I mean, asterisk. But... <laughs> it's playing Dynasty Warriors. Yet. Yeah, Lubu seems like a really important character in Three See, Kingdoms. That's my. Th- I was about to say. I feel like that is when I prior to all of this. And by all of this, I mean meeting you two and, like, talking to you more for this podcast. Like, that's, like, the guy I always had heard about. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, he he has come up relatively little in terms of actual discussion of Three Kingdoms. Uh, Well, you know, he has, he's an, he, right, he is an important character in a sense. um, Because he demonstrates something. Uh, and um, it's an important thing to demonstrate because this book is propaganda for how you... Sh- it's, like, about how you should rule and how you should obey and how what loyal, you know, what loyalty is and wh- when is ri- is right it is right to betray, wh- when it's heaven-defined. Uh, uh, oh, oh, you have... You, you know, what's the difference between betraying your lord and your lord losing the mandate of heaven? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah. um, uh, w- w- one might say that uh, because of when it was written and by who, for what purpose, uh, a certain character gets uh, embellished as being more heroic, even though he's uh, one, less capable than the quote-unquote villain, and two, uh, does all the same things as the guy who beefs it, but for the right reasons, quote-unquote. <laughs> mm, there's also... Uh, the The... I mean, the the thing is, I on the one hand, the book is kind of propaganda, but also the 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 Liu Bei um Cao Cao stuff does come out really well. I think it was it's it's really good, like how you know what happens to those two characters in the end, and uh the 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 path that uh Liu Bei takes is um oh, it's just cool. It's a very cool book. A <laughs> big fan. <laughs> Um, even if, you know, obviously I, uh, I disagree with a lot, with, with a lot of the premises of the, of the, I'm, you know, it's, a uh, it is what it is. It's a good book. I can't wait to finish the book and then one, play Dynasty Warriors and two, watch that Korean toku show. <laughs> yes, that does sound really funny. The Three Kingdoms is kind of brain breaking in the same way where like, uh, like I'm Tomino brain broken where like you were talking about the Godzilla rides again, love triangle um, and how one of them just conveniently just dies. And I'm like, no cowardice. I just, you know, (laughs) one of them can just be sad. It's fine. (laughs) Just don't be a coward. One of them could blow themselves up and then stagger out of the mine. While the, Oh yeah. That's that's, (laughs) yes. Like that that one guy. Yeah. Um, that, the fact he lived long enough, incredible. Ridiculous man. Um, alright, well, unless we have anything else, I think we can get into Ultraman. Uh, so let me tell you about episode 19 of Ultraman, Evil Repeated. Uh, at a construction site, a large cylindrical capsule is unearthed. A man named Dr. Fukuyama is called in to, to inspect it, and the squad are there to support It is suggested that it could be a time capsule from 300 million years ago, Uh, but when they open it, all they find is a metal plate and a sealed blue liquid. Uh, So they found the beta capsule goop. Yep, they found they found the beta capsule goop. Um, (laughs) I was I was like, oh great, another fucking rock episode, and then I was like, wait, no, they're capsules, they're different. (laughs) Yep, liquid, different to rock. Um. The uh, Fukuyama takes the plate um, and orders the liquid to be brought back to a lab. Everyone leaves, happy that they've recovered everything interesting. Construction resumes and immediately unearths a second capsule with red liquid in it, and this one goes entirely unnoticed, gets picked up with a pile of soil and dumped somewhere across town. Back at base, Arashi explains the timeline of events. 300 million years ago, dinosaurs and mammoths ruled the earth. And mm. huge <laughs> monkeys. Allegedly. Allegedly. So, so true. <laughs> Go off. <laughs> um, it's incredible. 
Well, some of my favorite images. We we need oh, we him. need a timeline of all the dubious science that's been said in this show to get the Ultraman version of human history. The, the thing I just is want to say on I just want on record that three hundred million years ago neither existed. <laughs> yeah, Ide, Ide also immediately corrects him. It's just like okay, so he gets it wrong when he corrects him, but he's like more correct. He's like okay, is it no 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 a hundred million years ago dinosaurs and mammoths ruled the earth. And humans didn't exist. Um, yeah, to, to his credit, that's two out of three. <laughs> two out of three. <laughs> we'll leave them. We'll forget the mammals. Mammals? Mammoths. Um, and then Fuji's like, and before that? What was before that? Um, you know, pre-glacial period or something. Um, there could have been an advanced civilization, more technically advanced than ours. Um, and, um, you know... <laughs> What if that's where the time capsules are from? Muramatsu orders Hayata and Ide to visit Dr. Fukuyama, who has uncovered something about the metal plate. Fukuyama says there's something inscribed on the plate, and it must contain some secrets, but he can't figure it out. Ide figures it out by dropping it and letting the light from it reflect onto the wall, entirely by accident, projecting an ancient script. Uh, Fukuyama gets to work on interpreting this text, uh, though it will take some time. I would argue it would take much longer than it did. But uh, meanwhile, a storm rages outside and researchers try to open the blue liquid capsule in any way they can. The strike of lightning awakens the red liquid in the dumped capsule and it becomes a giant red kaiju. An experimental electric ray awakens the blue capsule and it becomes a blue kaiju. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Uh, (laughs) Fukuyama returns with the translated message from the metal plate. Uh oh, <laughs> we have finally captured the devil monsters Vanilla the Red and Avarice the Blue. Uh, we turned them into liquid and buried them deep within the earth. Their cage must not be opened. If the monsters are ever returned to life, it will be the end of mankind. Do you th- do you think the writer of this one was mad that uh, the name Red King was already taken? Oh man! <laughs> well, you know what? The That's... Red King got dethroned. This is the new one. <laughs> This is the new Red King. Um, the Red King is about to get dethroned again. Uh, <laughs> I've I've seen future Ultra, and that's not true. <laughs> uh, Vanilla and Abaras go on a rampage and are on course to encounter each other. Fukuyama's one hope is that the two might fight each other. His hope is realized, as it turns out, these two kaiju fucking hate each other. It's time for the SSSP to deploy. And I love this time, Emerald. Yeah, this time they're bringing along. A member of the team, sidelined until now, who really deserves their day in the field. Fukuyama. Um, Fuji stays at home. On the scene, it looks like Abaras the Blue is winning, and Muramatsu gives Arashi the go-ahead to end Vanilla with an atomic bomb. That's not a joke. (laughs) (laughs) Arashi pops a little foam nuclear rocket on the front of his pistol and shoots Vanilla with it, um, like it's a fucking Starship Troopers mini-nuke. Um... Abaras then melts Vanilla's uh, remains with his foamy, cold spray breath thing. Um, so I guess it's time for Ultraman. Hayata turns into Ultraman and fights Abaras. He briefly gets frozen, but manages to break out of it and kills Abaras dead with the Spacium Beam. And then the episode literally just ends. <laughs> uh, he, he, after multiple egregious shots of this monster shooting its breath and then Ultraman side hopping like the video game dodge... Uh, and then shooting the spacium beam using, I think, the same footage like three times in a row. I was like, damn, this one's taking Ultraman, a minute. <laughs> Ultraman has the suds. He has the suds. These are, so yes, the one thing not mentioned in this summary is that the ice breath, um, what, I, what, what I have to assume is an ice breath. It's never mentioned as an ice breath, but I assume it's ice breath from uh, Abra, Ab, Abras, uh is is just foam. Is just like uh, someone's picked up a fire extinguisher off the wall and just sprayed some foam, um, which is I, I, it's audacious enough that I'm like, go ahead, fantastic. Really. Yeah, there's some stuff in original Kamen Rider with like weird foam effects that like this definitely reminded me of. Hmm. Um. But yeah, this this episode uh, kind of. Uh, one of the more standard ones that we've had in a while. The main twist is two of them um, at the same time. 
Um, unfortunately, they Can't don't like they each other. So fucking fun. random professor a gun and not Fuji. Yeah, I, I yeah. have like three notes. Well, I guess working backwards. One, did y'all notice how fast this one ended? Where they're like, okay, we defeat the monster by like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like, uh, Ide is like, hey, Ultraman won, and then you know, credits would roll if credits rolled at the end of the show. Uh, yeah. but they don't. Um, it's just you know, episode just ends. Done. <laughs> um everyone go home we're, uh, we're done filming for the day we've already spent too much money uh yeah it's the, ultra, um, the uh ultraman yen counter going up yeah. yes <laughs> yeah um i the the actual highlight of this episode is just the images of um darashi explaining uh that Mel posted. I'm just like this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's just him, just him, just standing next to a very skeptical looking Ide, just like very confidently saying, "Humans were monkeys." <laughs> True. Um, the other, the other notes I made about this episode is one: I appreciate that both of the monsters had enough sportsmanship to agree that they were going to combat each other to death it, at the Olympic Stadium. Uh, <laughs> you love to see yeah. it. <laughs> um, and then my last note is that uh, that red one, like, I feel like didn't look as good as a lot of the other monster suits we've seen, in part because I don't think they could get the net, like, the long neck to sit right. It's, like, mm-hmm. kind of, like, crumpling and, like, falling. Like, it's, it's, it can't, like, outstretch all the way it needs to. I think it like the top of the head was too heavy. Uh mm-hmm. and I noticed like, oh geez, like even though the budget's here, sometimes you just can't make the suit look the way you necessarily want it to. <laughs> yeah. As they were at the Olympic Stadium, they really should have done more than fight. They should have done like javelin, discus. <laughs> that would have made for a good episode maybe. Um uh, but yeah, uh, as it stands, this one uh, kind of unremarkable, save for <laughs> just uh, Fuji taking more L's. <laughs> yeah, it won't be the last time. This was another uh, Nonagase episode, uh, which uh, coming off of Brother from Another Planet, which was also him. It's like, damn, that's uh, this one's just like, yeah, it's uh, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, did you did better with Brother from Another Planet. Yeah. Uh, still still my favorite episode title in Ultraman so far. Um, yeah. Do we have... So here's the thing. Because it's a little light, we haven't talked very long, but I'm already like, do we have anything else to say about Evil Repeated? Uh, no. I will say, uh, Wikipedia says that... Though not Wikipedia. The wiki says that Demons Rise Again is the episode title, which is cooler, I think. That is cooler. Um, that that is cooler. Um, my title makes me feel like <laughs> it's like evil repeated. I was like, oh, like the red and blue stones. You're bringing it back, but now it's red and blue liquid. Uh, evil repeated it. sounds like it could be a Coheed song. Uh, that's my stance. Yeah, uh, I'm just this week. I'm without my Blu-ray disc, so I'm using the red method. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, the the red the red method is um uh perfectly fine, officer. Uh, please get out of my house. Um, okay. Well, if we don't have anything else to say about episode nineteen, um, we can get on to episode twenty. Uh, which has more happening. Uh, but um, I wrote a shorter summary because a lot of the th- the stuff that's happening is just action. Um, so. Episode 20 of Ultraman, the dreaded Route 87. Uh, it's the beginning of I Saw a Bird all over again, as a night yeah. guard tries to calm down a bunch of captive animals at a park that are extremely agitated. Um, the I, w- I was it. like, is this intention? It was so close to my memory of the start of I Saw a Bird that I was like, "Was mm-hmm. this? is this like intentionally like hearkening back to that? Like, what's going on? Yeah, part of, part of me has to like because the kaiju here is like a bird bird dinosaur kaiju i have i kind of have to assume yeah probably maybe i don't know um but anyway um the guard witnesses the top of the nearby mountain illuminate with flashes of light um 
The next day, the SSP are here to investigate, and we get the best shot of Ultraman, which is three of the squad in a row riding the little individual ski lift type of thing up the mountain <laughs> in their uniforms. <laughs> Um, uh, that was amazing. Um, the squad struggles to figure out what the deal is with this one. Um, and Arashi wonders if maybe the guard just saw the full moon reflected in the mountain dew. Um, and, uh, they, uh, uh, back at base, an entirely new kid interrupts Fuji and tells her Hidora will attack again. Fuji is like, uh, who is Hidora? Also, who are you? And uh, the kid leaves and Ide enters right after. Fuji asks Ide if he knows who the kid is, and Ide responds, what kid? He calls security, and they apparently don't know anything about this kid. Um, strange. Fuji I have a question. Go ahead. How did, your, how did your sub spell this monster's name? Uh, H-I-D-O-R-A-H. Okay, on the Blu-ray, they just call it Hydra, like the Greek creature. And I was like, uh, that's not a Hydra. <laughs> I, do, I do not think it's Hydra. Yeah, that's that, That's not Hydra. <laughs> it. I was expecting something a lot different uh, from the, like, because they're, like, featuring the monster Hydra at the start. And I was like, oh. And I was like, that is that is a bird. <laughs> Damn. I, you know. I don't, I don't want to cast aspersions on the Blu-ray, because, you know, nice of them to have a Blu-ray out of this, uh, but uh, I, I think that's a mistake. Um, listen, listen, there's a there's a show we may cover in the future that may have notoriously bad subs on the official Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Look forward um, to that in, like, three years. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, what was I? Yes, uh, Fuji relates this story to the squad out in the field, and they ask the park owner about Hidera. Uh, he's confident that Hidera won't attack, because Hidera is a stone statue in the park, based on a design sent in by a kid named Akira. Uh, the squad investigates Akira, and learn that he died in a hit and run on Route 87. Uh, he was a big fan of giant monsters, and his pride and joy was his drawing of Hidera, a monster he claimed to have actually seen. Uh, when Fuji sees the memorial photo for Akira, uh, she says it looks just like the kid who visited her at the base. Uh, we got some ghost shit. Uh, going broad here, because what unfolds is a lot of just kaiju wrecking shit, uh, Hidera awakens from the top of the mountain and flies for Route 87, where it starts destroying any pass vehicle, any passing vehicle. Um, Hayata is injured and left in the care of a field hospital, uh, where he sneaks into a bush and hits the Ultraman button. He fights Hidera, but at the last moment, just before fighting, firing the Spacian Beam, Fuji, and only Fuji, sees the ghost of Akira riding Hidera, and she yells that Ultraman should spare Hidera. He does. Momentous occasion. Um, back at the park, the squad look at the Hidera statue and speculate that Akira's will may have transferred to Hidera, and Hidera is like a spirit that avenges kids uh, to die in car accidents. Uh, everyone wonders why only Fuji could see the ghost, uh, and she jokingly says maybe it's because she has a childlike personality. Uh, everyone laughs. Uh, also, the criminal very con the the person uh, who hit the kid very conveniently hadn't turned himself in and has been arrested. Uh, just and now the kaiju served. problem is solved. <laughs> the kaiju problem is solved. We do not have to fight it. Uh, the end. Uh, that's a real just like uh, we gotta wrap this <laughs> yep. up, uh, at the end there um, Real some real uh, what if the monster was weak to salt water <laughs> <laughs> what if what if maybe you never know um, one day those aliens are gonna come back and I'm gonna pop um, the uh, I you know I like I like the ghost shit um, same I, th I thought it was good we finally get Ultraman just sparing a kaiju, like, like th this is the second time, kind of, but he still kept fighting the uh, like the the first one, which was the the weird rock that turned into a giant monster, um, the rascal. Yeah, the rascal, um, the rascal from space. Uh, but yeah, this time uh, refrains from fighting, firing the spacing beam again, and just lets the kaiju go, which is like mercy to the point of like, is is that not gonna keep killing people? <laughs> yeah, um, it was. Uh, I like this episode a fair bit. Um, I I do like that. Yeah, we finally got the okay. This one is just allowed to exist alongside us in the world. Uh, I really liked the ghost shit. 
Um, I honestly, I just got like a lot of Ultra Q vibes from this episode. We talked a little bit about the the beginning at the zoo, but yeah, then I was thinking. Al- also like the ghost, like ghost child riding the monster at the end made me think of fucking I saw a turtle. Um, God, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I- I, I was appre- thinking this episode the same as like a Miz and Ultra Q ass episode. Yeah, I I appreciate how uh, too the I I took note of the first uh, that first scene with that ghost kid, like felt like a ghost story in a way that I feel like you would get out of like a real person. Like you know what I mean? Like you know when you're, like you're talking with friends or whatever, and like mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, do you have any ghost stories? And if someone does, like it's almost always something that's like slightly creepy, but also slightly mundane, like that, where it's like. Well, there was could, a kid, could, who, kid who could have easily could have easily just been no one spotted the kid. Yes, exactly. But then, like, oh, but someone was walking in and didn't even see him, and it was not any of the camera. Like, yeah, uh, I thought that was fun. Uh, the slow realization, like, oh, this kid who won this contest actually dead. Uh, pretty good. Um, <laughs> I know I, I referenced this in the group chat, but this one was weird for me because it ru- subject mm-hmm. matter wise rubbed up against a. Real family tragedy I'm still grieving from, from uh, last November. Uh, so that was a little like, oh, uh, okay, uh, for me at 1.30 in the morning today. But um, I overall, though, I do like the episode quite a bit. Uh, I think it's I think it's pretty strong. Um, something I, okay, I, I know this might be jumping the gun going a little bit too early, but it just stood out to me. So I think this is the last of the... New director roundup for Ultraman. Um, flipping through this little booklet thing that came with the oh, actually no, there's a name here I don't recognize, so maybe second to last. But um, this was directed by Yuzo Higuchi, uh, who has maybe the least information out there of any of the directors I've looked up. Um, oh, okay, he is primarily known for his work on Ultraman. He then he's mostly a producer though too. It sounds like. Uh, the thing I found is that he primarily was involved uh, because he was friends with Subaraya, or at least acquaintances with Subaraya, uh, and he was originally meant to just do production type stuff, but then at some point got involved as a director because they needed people. Uh, so that's why he directed a, hand f- a handful of Ultraman episodes, and then also too worked with uh, fellow Ultraman director Ijima on a. Um, like, I think it was, like, a historical drama that they were both really excited about, but then only lasted, like, 12 episodes and no one cared about. And they are like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're not doing anything with that anymore. Um, but I wanted to point out, like, on his, like, very scant Japanese Wikipedia page, there's, like, a quote from an assistant director that was like, yeah, he's a good director, but he, there's not much individuality or style to anything he makes. And I was like... I disagree. Like, I feel like there's <laughs> definitely, like, a very strong, like, style to th- this episode and also the next one that we're going to see is by this guy, too, that stands out from other stuff. I don't know. I thought, I just, that comment took me aback. Um, at the very least, if I, if I, as a creative person, had a Wikipedia page and that was one of the, like, 300 words written about there, it. I'd be a little pissed off. I'd be like, bro, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he's alright. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Uh Yeah. I most of this most of this episode is just like the action as Hidero just wrecks shit. Um it's good. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of just like stepping on model cars and the model cars exploding. Um good shit. I like the scene a lot where Arashi is just running and this thing is just, t- like, tumbling after him. <laughs> it's, it's very, right. it's very good. Yeah, um, Arashi gets involved in some kind of attempt to trick Hidera, trap, trap it. Um, I don't know what the plan is here, but it ends with him shooting the spider shot at uh, Hidera, which, like, um, I realize that's his job. Um. Uh, we have yet to end a kaiju with uh, him shooting anyone. Yet, it's about to happen <laughs> soon. <laughs> I think Arashi might be my unsung hero of the show. Like Ide gets a lot of good <laughs> scenes, but I feel like Arashi's, Arashi... Arashi's just you know, 
He's uh he doesn't he doesn't know when dinosaurs were around, but <laughs> he's he's having fun. There's I, a there's a simplicity to his worldview that I appreciate, a directness, if you will. <laughs> yeah, the, the, truly truly a Bert and Ernie mode. <laughs> yeah, I I liked what what was it the the mummy episode where he was um. That's like uh, now. Excuse me. I'm not trigger happy. I don't just shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, you do. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's, me he's when my entire personality revolves show. around my gun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, American um, Prometheus would fucking love this guy. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. I don't have. Uh, much more about uh, the dreaded the dreaded Route eighty seven. I don't know what the title is in the in the Blu ray. Uh, I think it's called Terror on uh, Route eighty seven. Oh, I like the dreaded Route eighty seven. I think that's good. Um, but yeah, unless we have more, uh, I can move on to uh, uh, uh just an an assault on Fuji as a character. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, with like, yeah. like, 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 you'd think like now, Red. I think you're exaggerating because we had the Pearl episode. Surely that was no, no, no. She was barely like she was. First of all, she was barely in that episode. Um, and I realize that itself is rough. Uh, but like she was at least like involved. She was like competent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is, it's so funny, this episode. Earlier, earlier in this series of episodes, we unironically just get a scene of all of the men in the show going like, well, we got a mission to do, and walking out of the room while Fuji stares on alone, <laughs> like, left behind. And I was like, oh, damn, I got some more Fuji things to vent about this recording yeah. session. And then we hit this episode. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, episode 21 is called Break Through the Smoke. Uh, birds are dropping out of the sky, and hikers are seeing giant eyes in thick volcanic smoke. I just, I just want to point out how this scene starts. It's just a kid walking around, and he just finds the bird and decides to pick it up. And yeah, what the fuck, them, kid? And then take them to school. <laughs> just be like, just hey, how about this bird? Just, a, just a normal kid uh, singing some rhymes and then picking up some dead birds and take takes them to te- like his teachers or whatever, and his teachers like. Did you kill these birds? What are you doing? <laughs> um, the SSP are not interested. Ide thinks it seems too normal, and Arashi says investigating it is a job fit only for women and children. And Fuji's like, okay, I can I go then? And Murumasu's like, ah, she's got you there, bro. <laughs> Lamau. Uh, and lets her take the second squad jet out, which I finally figured out is called the Mini VTOL. Um, it's not that mini. It's about the same size. I yeah, like. I was but... like, what? What? That's a weird name for it. <laughs> um, Hoshino sneaks on board the mini VTOL because he too is bored and wants to do something and tells Fuji to her face that he thinks she's a pushover. And she's like, yeah, fair enough. Uh, Fuji and Hoshino land the mini VTOL near the crater of the volcano. Uh, after a brief conversation with a guy in a bow tie who is... Who is this guy? What does he do? Uh, he's he's like, like runs a... the hotel and he's also a misogynist. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, anyway, after a brief conversation about how bothersome the SSSP's presence is for tourism, uh, Fuji and Hoshino return to the jet. But before they can take off, they get caught in the poison gas. And oh no, they didn't close the fucking door. So they're passed out at the controls. Um, with Fuji and Hoshino in need of rescue, the squad launches in the VTOL to investigate. Flying through clouds of ga- of gas, Hayata says the danger meter is off the charts, and I want to know what units you measure danger in. Um, is it Ichinotani's? Absolutely. Okay. Um, they land and hike to the edge of the volcanic crater in gas masks, and they see Kemula, uh, the kaiju causing all the problems. They shoot it, but we get to see Kemula launch its gas attack, which is pretty cool, to be fair. There's, like, these flashes of light in its mouth, and then the gas comes pouring out. Um, the masks aren't going to cut it, so the squad has to retreat to the VTOL. 
Uh, they're about to leave when Ide says he's picking up a sound. It's the mini VTOL. It's Fuji and Hoshino. They call the mini VTOL, and it is categorically not Fuji and Hoshino. It's just Hoshino. Fuji is passed out in the pilot seat, and there she will remain for the rest of this mission. Uh... Kemula is bearing down on the mini VTOL and Muromatsu runs Hoshino through the launch procedure. Uh, Hoshino takes off and sets it to autopilot, uh, now to deal with Kemula. Uh, Kemula causes general destruction. Uh, the gas is affecting a nearby town and the SDF learns the hard way that Kemula has a tail beam attack. Uh, back at base, Ide is going Ichinotani mode, uh, lab coat, glasses, my first chemistry set, the works. Uh, and he's concocting a medicine that will neutralize the gas. Hoshino thinks that's boring, uh, and says Ide should instead invent something to attack the shadow of the Colossus' weak point on Kemula's back. <laughs> yep. um, and there's, like like, the, the one, there's like the one. There's like the one alt capsule that's like every kaiju has a weak point, so you should just use it. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is Kemula it, all over again. If I if I ran it up against a terrifying monster, I would simply find its weakness and deal with it. Thank you, Ultra Q narrator. Your advice finally yeah. pulled through. <laughs> um, and um, Ida thinks it's a great idea. He's like, oh, he's back. Yeah. Um, the SSSP deploy to fight Kemula, and Hayata in the VTOL gets fucking blown up. Not crash landed. The VTOL fucking explodes. Uh, and mid-fall, he turns into Ultraman. Uh, Ide arrives on the scene with the mad bazooka, but he doesn't want to shoot. Uh, he might hit Ultraman. Uh, Hoshino shouts, Ultraman, we want to shoot it! And Ultraman wrestles Kemula into a position to get shot. Uh, Ide pulls the trigger and hits Kemula's weak spot, uh, and then it crawls defeated into a crater and explodes. Victory. Uh, the squad visits Fuji in the hospital and are surprised to see Hayata there as they thought he was injured or visiting Paris HQ, one or the other. Uh, they're so happy to see him, they almost forget that they were there to visit Fuji. Uh, the end. Um, and by the end, I think you mean the cartoon circle closes in. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> That's like awful. a Looney Tunes episode. <laughs> uh, this last scene threw me for a loop because I was like... Uh, because Hayata is Ultraman and is always fine, I forgot that other characters would assume he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, when they were like, duh, they say, uh, Hayata's in Paris, by the way. I was like, why are they saying this? Why is he in Paris? And he walks in and they're surprised to see him. And I'm like, oh, it's because it's a cover story. <laughs> is pa so is Paris there? They've gone to the farm. <laughs> 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 He's in Paris now. <laughs> This is how they explain death to Arashi. <laughs> um, a young boy I, won the master competition, then drove to Paris. So I meant Hoshino. Why did I say Arashi? <laughs> <laughs> it's even funnier though. That's, that's, Arashi is funnier. I should, I should have meant Arashi. <laughs> Uh, uh, Hoshino understands he's a he's a grown up mature enough more than Fuji yeah. apparently according to the writers. No, Fuji's childlike, uh, childlike brain. That's why she can see ghosts. Um, and also falls just falls asleep for most of the episode. <laughs> She's just fucking unconscious at the controls most of this episode. Yeah. What are we doing here, it's, bro? It's so, it's so fucked up because like we got the hotel guy being like offended that the SSSP is sending a woman and child, and I mean yes. I probably would be concerned if, like, an organization sent a child, but, like, I can't tell if, like, the show wants to indict him because he's insulting, insulting the protagonist, or if the show just agrees because that's what ends up happening. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, you know, I, what, what is the lesson here? The lesson is that don't send Fuji out on missions, bro. <laughs> she ain't doing shit. I, I, and also, too, like, we've had it multiple times now where... Fuji and Hoshino are up to hijinks, and then Fuji gets taken out of commission, or, like, Hoshino is the one to, like, start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I really, like, and obviously it's not, like, great, too, I guess, in its own way, but I would appreciate it if Hoshino got in trouble a little bit more, and then it fell on Fuji, but, like, they just, they do not want to ever mm -hmm. go that route, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Fuji just being Hoshino's way into the plot uh is annoying um it's 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 like transparent at this point it's just like uh, fuji's 
like exists to like just kind of be his babysitter so that he can be a be a hero sometimes um it's just you know on the other hand uh the scene of running through how the the mimi vtol launches i was like just you know activated my brain a little bit just on like a fundamental level just like oh yeah cool <laughs> i'm watching cool shit yeah um that was like the uh the one big thing um uh Cam- right camula is uh uh so what's up with the the weird wing plate things on its back what's 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 happened what's the intention here what's it, happening here? it reminded me of that one i can't remember its name but remember that one we saw that like ultraman like ripped off its weird like yes it, it, it like kind of had that vibe and it made me i i don't know but the something about its face seemed familiar i don't know if this is like a reused suit um but I was like, huh, mm. like something about this. It could just be the fact it had like the flappy things that reminded me of the, that past monster. But um, mm-hmm. I was wondering the whole time, like, oh, have I seen this before? Yeah. Um, the, 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 the actual, I mentioned it in the summary, but the actual effect on the gas coming out with like the, the weird crackling in his mouth and like the light, the lights happening at the same time. It's, um, it's kind of cool. Um, that's about the most like that's the about the most I can say about Camular. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. I think um, I feel like the names for these kaiju's are just rearranging the same syllables in different combinations. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, eventually you kind of run out of syllables. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um. Wait, wasn't Bemular the bird thing that Ultraman almost like? Yes, and it was also the kaiju in the first episode. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, this is Bemular. Um. Yeah. The, um... Uh... Yeah. Uh, this is just kind of a... Just a, an episode to just, you know, put Fuji in her place. Uh, clearly, uh, it's this, uh, she's not cut out to be out in the field. Um, she's just somehow still a more respected character than Kagali from uh, Gundam Seed Destiny and Seed. Um, but, you know, that's that's uh, about as, as far as you can get. Um... Yeah. Rip. Sucks to be Fuji. Uh, su- sucks to be the actress playing Fuji, who was like, like, it's gotta be like, it's frustrating to be her playing the role, reading the scripts and going like, bro, what happened? I was, like, last year, I was like, involved. Yeah. Like, episodes were about me in a way that, like, I guess they still are, but <laughs> the the way... The character is treated as just done so dirty. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's just like, not only did Ultra Q do it better, but with the same actress, and so it's like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, hopefully Ultra 7 is better about this. Uh, we will see. Well, hopefully, right, here's the thing. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't necessarily expect this, but hopefully because this this was made in batches. Hopefully they're like, oh, people aren't liking Fuji. <laughs> we, we, we fucked up. Um, maybe we should uh, give her some uh, time to shine. Uh, it could happen. It's possible. Me me doing like a... That sweet life quote where it's like, oh man, in 20 episodes they didn't get Fuji right. Let's shoot for 40. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah well, um, do we have uh, what is it? Uh, credits, uh, director credits for this one. This or was did you say that was the yeah. This was also Yuzo uh, Higuchi. Uh, okie dokie. Uh, do we have color timers for these episodes? Yeah, we do. Sick. Uh, episode nineteen, two minutes ten seconds. Episode mm-hmm. 20, 2 minutes, 24 seconds. And then mm-hmm. episode 21, 2 minutes, 17 seconds. All about the same. Damn. Um, how Do we have... Uh, what's the longest we've had so far? I'm going to scroll up through my notes. One of them was like over 4, I thought. Yeah, I think we had one that was like over 4 minutes. Yeah. I think there was one that was like just short, just over... Yeah, oh, episode 11 was 4 minutes, 17 seconds. It's 4 minutes, 15 seconds. Um, what was episode 11? 
That was uh, the Rascal from Outer Space. Oh yeah, that was a yeah, that was a long one. I want to say the the shortest one is episode fourteen, one minute and four seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, do we have anything more to say about this episode? Do we have anything nice to say about this episode? No. No. Yeah. I Rip. think I think this one officially may have ended my streak of like, oh yeah, I'm pretty all right episodes run so far. But then this one, yeah. I was like, kind of like, eh. <laughs> yeah. It's not That's... the worst. Like, there's there's enough like fun stuff going around with like the gas and like I do think like oh all of the birds are dead or like is like a really evocative hook. Um, yes. But yeah, as as soon as it gets into it with the monster, I kind of stopped caring. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, unfortunately, uh, Ultraman letting us down a little bit this week. Um, uh, I believe you said we don't have any emails this week. No, we don't have any emails. Okie dokie. Well, uh, unless we have anything else, uh, we can just go straight into plugs. Uh, this is a, a, a drastic swing in the other direction uh, from last week uh, where uh, the, we ran for quite a while. Uh, this time we got a bit of a short, shorter episode. Um if you want to follow the show, uh, you can do so at ultra underscore Q on Twitter. Um, if you want to follow me, I'm at gender underscore redacted on Twitter and at November on uh, co-host. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, I'm at Rosenbrand on Twitter. I'm also Rosenbrand on YouTube. I'm probably going to be streaming uh, a lot of Tears of the Kingdom this week. Uh, and try to keep practicing for Combo Breaker and hopefully have some more Marvel 3 stuff up uh, because uh, that tournament is like two weeks away. Uh, yeah, good I'm luck. Not, oh, yeah. Thank I you. Forgot. I, I am not where I uh, want to be with a lot of the games I signed up for because I've been mostly just playing Marvel 3 because that game's very fun. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, In the past week, uh, my locals did the Idol Showdown tournament. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. We didn't talk about that. How yeah. did you do? Uh, uh, I was, we ended up doing like a weird team thing where it's like teams of five and like I lost the one game I played but my team was the winner so I guess it works oh. out. Um, there you nice. go. But uh, yeah, that game's kind of scuffed in a lot of ways. <laughs> it's, it's it's goofy. Uh, we the whole tournament was jank because uh, for local uh, play on the same system, you have to have both controls set ma- have the same button mapping. <laughs> Oh, so, oh uh, that's annoying. It was a little jank trying to get the controls working and everyone being like, okay, this goes for this button, this goes for this button, or we just agree on the default. <laughs> uh, it was goofy, but funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think I plugged all my stuff, so. <laughs> uh, Mel. Uh, my, the, sometimes Twitter is at Dear Crowns. There's also a Cosmic on Instagram. I, that is not a word. What the what did I say? Uh, cosmic, uh, cosmic under scrum yeah cosmic underscore scr- blah, 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 blah. well cosmic underscore crown at titch twist <laughs> at titch <laughs> cosmic <laughs> underscore at tits wait hold on uh, that's the way you want to be one day anyway <laughs> <laughs> I support you. Thanks. <laughs> Cosmic underscore crown at twitch dot TV, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not a streamer. I'm not a big streamer or anything. I just, you know. You stream sometimes. This is yeah. just fun to stream with the friends sometimes. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's cozy. There's like two people who know me and then like a bunch of people I don't know who just never speak. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, normal social interactions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is that email address? UltraQPod at gmail.com Cool. Not going to put right. that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, Ultraman letting us down a little bit this week. Uh, hopefully next week. I can't believe uh, Fuji was let down like this on Mother's Day. <laughs> on true. Mother's Day. Except she's not a mother and women don't have to be, but also. Uh, no, she is a mother. She has Hoshino. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. <laughs> about about what the show is she's she has been forced she's had this kid forced on her uh it sucks oh, shout, well. shout outs uh, to all the moms out there listening to this podcast of which i'm sure there are many 
There might be a couple. Um, well, hopefully, uh, next week, uh, we'll do better by Ultraman. Uh, we are watching episodes, uh, what episodes are we watching? I've, I've, 22 I've to gotten 24. One. That's the one. Episode 22, 23, and 24. Entering the fourth disc, except I'm not, because my disc isn't here anyway. Yeah. Um, entering the, you know, the, the different file folder. I don't yeah. know. Anyway. World for half hour. Um, yeah. Well, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.